Walk it for yourself. guitar. Today we're doing Walk That Lonesome Valley by Mississippi John Hurt. So this is a classic of Mississippi John Hurt's, partially because it was recorded so well on a TV show. You got to walk that lonesome valley. Where do you got to walk? It has become a favorite of many Delta Blues fans and Mississippi John Hurt fans. Highly recommend his stuff. His guitar parts are very admired in the blues community, in the guitar community because his finger picking parts are just really intricate yet also soulful and simple at the same time. Really a, a, an amazing blend. So let's take a look at this guitar part and we'll dive on into the specific notes later. Um, but we have, you know, the key of G, but there's some interesting stuff going on, quite unique in terms of the chord progression, if you can call it that. So, so let's take a look at some of these picking techniques. He is doing Travis picking, but it's also hearkening to like Piedmont blues or Piedmont picking where there's a lot of syncopated melodies going on. It's just great stuff and you know this isn't necessarily like a blues progression here. These are just more folk chords here. So we have a G and he's using two fingers and a thumb. Usually I use three fingers including the ring finger here but I'm just using index and middle try to get his sound. He's also kind of got the wrist a little bit closer to the strings than I usually play so I'm kind of adapting my style to really get his sound. And we have this sort of awesome, you know, awesome part here. So what's happening is some downbeats and then it's immediately syncopated. And then the G string here will be a syncopated note sort of repeated here so it's like melody syncopation back to melody so like this a little bit of G over B now we slide up to an A and it's pretty much a D chord if we were like accompanying this in more folk style but in this awesome almost Delta Blues pattern here we have the A octaves going up uh, then B octaves, beautiful, back to G. I almost thought this was an open tuning just because of that octave thing going on at the very end as well. So really fascinating, the guitar part. Um, it's rare to see a bass and high E, you know, going in unison together, in parallel together, I should say, in two octaves apart, kind of mirroring the melody as well. So. Very unique guitar part in standard tuning. Beautiful Mississippi John Hurt. And I would say that any blues finger picking lesson is well worth your time because it really gets you zoned in on great groove, great rhythm, and also a lot of expression, right? It's like the notes and chords aren't that hard, but can we dive into the rhythm to the groove and really feel, you know, like we're in the pocket? And that's not easy to do. And furthermore, it's so essential in the blues, right? Because oftentimes you are unaccompanied, especially on an acoustic, where you really want to have a good sense of rhythm. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Uh, there'll be a full tab of this on the Patreon, and I recommend checking that out. And do subscribe and hit the notification bell and the thumbs up, really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so uh, we're gonna go through this nice and slow, of course, we're in standard tuning. And we'll kind of talk about the left hand and right hand a little bit separately. 
Um, so first off, the right hand, we're going to be doing, you know, a Travis picking part. And on the G chord, it's going to be sixth and fourth string. So I always recommend to my private students as well when we're doing finger picking, I want to just warm up on the thumb. And again, you know, I'm kind of right against the bridge here, right against the bridge pins. Okay. And the pickup measure is kind of tricky. So don't let it get you too distracted if you know if it's if it's providing challenges. But here we go. Sixth, fourth, sixth. Now you're gonna go second, third fret, second string. Then fourth and first together, then third. So it's like, and then you land on the third fret first string, G chord, and you be, you know you, you you play bass and first string together. So it's like, one more time, like that. Now. You know, if it's a little bit of a variation of that, that's fine. So let's get going on the intro. The intro is the same as the verse. So we have a repeating section, common in the blues, also known as strophic form, um, you know, which is also common in folk and other, other uh, genres as well. So I'm going to be using thumb and middle on the sixth and first string. Normally I'd recommend ring finger, but I'm going to do it like John Hurt. You're welcome to use ring finger. So we pinch, bass, and then first string again. Now we go bass, third, fourth, third strings, but the middle finger comes to that second fret, fourth string. So notice the middle finger's not doing anything for a while. The fifth string is muted actually. So it's like pinch, and that middle finger comes in to do a little bass uh, fill there. So slow would be sixth and first, fourth, first, sixth, Third, fourth, third. Okay, good. Now back to bass. First, bass, then some downbeats. Bass, bass. So that's one more time. Okay, so let's put those two bars together from the from the first uh, from the first downbeat there. Three, four. One. Open first string, third fret second string with the bass. Now we do a G over B. So the way he does it is he literally lifts his ring finger up and he goes bass on the fifth string now, second fret, third string syncopation, fourth string, third string. Okay, so back to G, bass, bass. Bass, first string, bass, third string. So let's do that whole four bar phrase. Let's do it with the pickup. So ready? Three, four, one, two, three. Okay, a little slower. Three, four. So uh, addicting. I love playing the blues. It's like gets you in a trance. The groove is just so deep. Now we're gonna slide five to five to the D over A basically. Let me just play it first. It's a little bit tricky. Now you notice I'm playing the fifth string muted. So optional to ignore that, but John Hurt is actually playing the fifth string muted at the um, third and fourth time that it would have been the sixth string. So it's like, right? It's just really fascinating. He's playing that on purpose. So optional, you could, you could just skip that and play the sixth string the whole time. So let's cover the part now. Very syncopated here, pretty tricky. Slide up, bass, first, bass, second. You add your first finger to the uh, second string, third fret. Like 
that. So it would be pinch, bass, first, bass, second, pinch, second string, bass, first, bass, third, bass, back to third fret. <laughs> and then bass, third string. So the whole thing is. And then you slide up to seven, seven. So very tricky. I would, it's just a lot harder than you would imagine probably. So you do that over and over. One more time. Now here's what it would sound like if I played the sixth string all four times. It would sound good as well. As you can tell though, it's a little different, right? He wanted that bass to be muted. Okay, then we slide up to seven and we do the exact same thing pretty much, but on the seven. So the same thing. Bass, first, bass, second, on the fifth fret this time. Bass, second. So slide, bass, first, bass, second, pinch, second, bass, first, bass, third, bass, fifth fret, first string, back to D over A, right? And then fourth, third, G. So without further ado, let's just play it. I think it's kind of easier to play it than to describe it, right? So we're going to play the entire phrase there. Ready? Three, four. Okay, then you're back at G, and we've already covered this kind of pattern. All the same, G over B, etc. Now our turnaround. So we've already covered that line. Now the last line would be up, first, second, first, second, and you know back to the D over A, bass, first, fourth, third. Now. Seven, seven, five, five, three, all downbeat. So that would be from the beginning of that line. Back there. And then our riff. You gotta walk. And then that takes you into the verse. I'm choosing to simplify the ending a little bit instead of the pickup notes from the intro to just be like, you've gotta walk, because it's easier for me to sing and do that. So the whole intro, which is the verse, they're identical. Let's take it slow, all right? And then we should be done. I, this lesson will be shorter than your practice time should be. Your practice time should be very long, trancing out, you know, looping this over and over. Ready? One, two, three, four, one, two. Just repeats over and over. I apologize for the buzzing if, if that's uh, if you're hearing that. Uh, this needs a little bit of a just the smallest adjustment right now. So do that over and over and over. Um, obviously, you know, groove and swing is very important. This is a swung eights. So uh, 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 it's not not a march, right? It's it's the it's a swung eighth. So there you go. Over and over and over, nice and slow, and remember to get lost in it. Right? Forget that you're even practicing. Just do this to the point where uh, you're just like in, in, the, in the flow. Okay, there's my last piece of, of wisdom for you. Hope you enjoy as always and looking forward to seeing you next lesson.